Linux OTC. Welcome to episode. Can anyone remember what episode we're on? I was just going to say, the, I don't. <laughs> the next one. The next yes. one, yeah. Um, because last episode was the uh, Eric and Bill show, wasn't it? Um, I believe so, yeah. yeah. And uh, unfortunately, we then had to do a um a postponement because I was on the other side of the world and you were on the other side of a hospital bed. And um, I know I ruined yeah. one of these. Is yes. it thirty five? I, I think, think it, it might be well. thirty. Well, I mean, whichever number it is, it's amazing how many we've done. Really, this is, this is a uh, this yeah. is a terrible way to start. <laughs> we can't yeah. even remember what show. Welcome to Linux 35. OTC. We haven't quit yet. All right, yes, it's thirty-five. <laughs> Excellent. All, All right. right then. So, how are you keeping? I'm uh, yeah, um, I'm getting over COVID after mm. a long been over two weeks and i'm finally just as of like a few days ago starting to feel normal again i can stand Ah, up for more than yeah huh huh it it was all it was all eric's fault that's why we didn't record him that's why yeah Uh, (laughs) yeah. let's blame the vid let's blame the vid yeah Uh, um i I mean uh, i I mean i I suppose it's good for your self-esteem to know that a pandemic virus finally did choose you after four years yeah (laughs) talk about feeling rejected huh you know like everyone around you gets it and it won't even (laughs) what's what about me you know yeah well you got it with a vengeance didn't you be careful what you wish for as they say well so Mm. i have it with in terms of longevity yes but in terms of severity no thankfully it's been pretty pretty weak and i don't feel like there's been any like lasting impact because I i know of a lot of people that have had like their sense of smell never really comes. Oh back yeah, normal. long, long yeah. COVID thing. Long COVID. Yeah, is yeah. So I, um, I, so- I have, a, I have an old colleague who, unfortunately, is still off work over, over a year later. You know, with the wow. chronic symptoms. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So it looks like we've actually got a surprise guest as well. Oh my God! We already did get the calls, Joe. Get out of here. <laughs> Well, more than merrier. We're never going to say no, really. Yeah, well, he okay. he can't even he can't even hit the the open mic button. Yeah, he just sorry. is he just sitting in there to I think he is. live. Yeah, ma- 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 maybe us. he's sitting there. Yeah, exactly. Well, we could do with some trolling. You know, you're getting famous if you're getting trolled. Do you oh, know? There there you know. Ah. <laughs> I just had to change the angle of my microphone to make sure that it wasn't catching the breeze off the uh, fan. Oh, yes. mm-hmm. okay. Good old, so I, said, good I read a story old, this morning. Put on my audacity. Uh, uh, we're using Craig. I mean, I don't know that you need to, but go ahead and go. To. I would say go ahead and record it just in case, and then yeah, in case Bill has a as a change of heart because but, he really liked Craig last time. So we'll yeah. See. yeah, no, Here's no countdown. Just press record. Go. Yeah. So, um, one of the things I remember about when I was an inpatient as a patient, you know, not just as working in the hospital. It's incredibly boring, um, you know, because you're ill and you're just lying down there. Um, and, you know, having phones and tablets and computers is a way of kind of stopping yourself going slowly mad from the boredom. Were yeah. you, did you do anything of that sort while you were in? Or you know were what's you so funny, of... though? Mm-hmm. You know, you do those things and it's funny. At home, I have like a routine. There's places I sit, I take my tablet, I go here, I, you know, watch a, a movie or something. And I don't know why, but that's sort of like part of the, the, the I, so I go to a hospital and I have all this time on my hands and a lot of time I just like end up watching terrible like commercial television or sports that I never ever watch unless I'm in the hospital. You take that back. Like, they have the best channel ever and it's the, um, it's the game show channel. And oh, okay. you just, yeah. you just leave it on that, that channel you would for never hours, watch man. unless you were right. there. Exactly. Yeah. But but it's like when you're there, it, it stimulates the brain, it keeps you on your toes. You're like, well, I've never seen this game before in my entire life. How no, is this on the air? I I'd have to no. I'd have to bring a tablet with yeah. I mean I, no, I, no, I must no, you, say that. you do, say, but you just there's just something about being there that you're not yourself. Like it's so strange. Yeah. I don't know how to, you know. Yeah. And no, no, well, I, 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 I do get what you mean. And it's like you don't want to do stuff um 
which requires any kind of effort, physical or mental. You know, yeah. and so, you know, if, you know, there might be a great series that you're in the middle of, but if it requires concentrating, you're just like, no, I don't want to concentrate. Yep. Just, Perfect. Just, Perfect. just slap some rubbish on and, you know. Well, what's yeah. funny is, so when I first got sick uh, almost 10 years ago, well, nine years ago, literally almost nine years ago next month, um, I kept working. So I worked the whole time that I was having inpatient chemo and like the nurses would come in and I'd be on a conference call and they're like, what are you doing? And yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm bored. I'm going to sit here and work and like try to get something done. And they're like, no, you're sick. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> like, I refuse yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but I, and I did that the whole time for months through, through chemo and everything. And it was great to have that because it meant that I had something to yeah. do. Yeah. But you, know? you were also sick for months and knew you were going to be sick for months. And yeah, that's true. One one thing that people tend to forget about, you know, when they're nurses is, yes, we'd like to get better, but we'd also like to keep paying our bills. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. There but is also, yeah. denial I mean, is it, a hell of a drug, man. What I was going to say, yeah, denial is it not is. just a river in Egypt. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, um, no, and I, th I think that's a very powerful part of it is if you have something to focus on that you, because you, if you just sit, like you're saying, you're mindless, you're kind of lethargic. Like if you just sit and let yourself sink in to that, it's really hard to kind of get, I, I, I mean, I think people decline and I think health outcomes are worse whenever they just sit and don't, you know, do anything. Oh, the, so. so, so there is something that, um, in medical psychology called the sick role which is when someone who gets unwell basically it becomes part of their being that they are sick you know oh mm. i can't do this because i'm sick oh i need a hand to do this because i'm sick i couldn't possibly All come to work there, because i'm sick you know and that's not psychologically healthy for you you know you need right. to have you know because otherwise it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and especially with people with chronic disorders you know um yeah. you know and you know you it, it is important sometimes to keep that kind of uh, normality um, so that mm -hmm. you don't fall into that and you don't get defined by your illness. You know, it's, right. you know, I'm, well, you know, I'm, I, I am so-and-so the engineer. I'm not so-and-so the cancer survivor. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and that's being shoved into that role. So, I mean, un unwillingly, I was made sick because everyone around me started talking to me differently, started looking at me differently. And I, I wasn't feeling that way, but mm. they were seeing me that way. And it was just like, wait a second. No, 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 no. I don't identify with that. You can see me that way, but I'm not going to buy into that. So anyway, and I still feel that way all these years later. And I still feel like, but I've, I've made peace with it. So, I, I mean, there is some of that sort of sick role where you kind of have to, to make yourself sort of, you know, you have to come to terms with the fact that you're going to be spending long hours Mm -hmm. doing nothing but being a patient and i spend a good part of my week every week like going to or coming from appointments or spending time at appointments and you have to have a certain alacrity with that like where you have to you have to deal with it in a, in a positive way or else it will eat you alive and i see so many people that just like you say sink into that like well i can't do anything because all i have is this you know it, it this defines me right yeah so i don't yeah. know yeah but no, i think apart it's, uh... from that Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I've been getting over it. I've been feeling better, um, uh, getting back to sort of, um, you know, being able to think and like, you know, just the brain fog and all this stuff. Yeah. We're going to find heard... out if that's true or not here in a minute. Well, I got a yeah, pop I mean, quiz so for you. Are, are you uh, going to be on tomorrow's show? Um, I'm going to try. I'm going to see okay. how I feel. I have to do this. We're going to suck all of his energy out today, baby. It is a show. bigger, it is a different kind of ask isn't it this is you know for you know three four guys having a you know a chat tomorrow is, is you know a longer and you know there's innards mm -hmm. and wanderings and stuff like that and so i think you need to well, um you know it, it's a different thing obviously no if you, if you can't you can't i understand yeah. that but right. um my, my my current issue is with tomorrow is um if it's me Probably. moss and and you know Majid up there, then it's going to be difficult for us to talk about wearables. I can discuss some aspects of wearables. I oh, can, I, you know, I, can, say, say, I can discuss some as well. Actually, got because it. I have a right. Uh, but uh, Moss isn't yeah, going to. Majid wears a name stuff. tag all the time. <laughs> <laughs> nope. He has. You've seen his scrubs, haven't you? He has all of the 
a custom embroidery on his yeah, drugs? Yeah, custom embroidery, uh, Decepticons uh... or Star Trek or, you know, things like that. You know, it's just so sad, isn't it, really? No, it's <laughs> fun. Apparently, it's fun, man. It's personality, apparently I'm a, man. Apparently, I'm a zillennial. I'm not a millennial because I'm too old, but I'm not Gen X because oh. I'm too young. Okay? Yeah. A zillennial is someone who's born in 1980, apparently. So just, uh, you know, just remember just enough of life before the internet, right? But yeah. just I after... Was born in 81, the how is that any different? Yeah, I was well, going to say, man. Like, well, if, if you've heard the song of the modem, you're a zillennial, I don't get it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, Listen, man, yeah. like housing is still unaffordable for everybody. So. That's right. They're trying to break us up, man. They're trying to divide yeah. these. Now, solidarity. Rule, rule, yeah? Yeah. Worker but solidarity, I'm, I'm baby. Not Gen X. I'll tell you that for yeah. a start. I don't yeah. believe that one. Um, no, there, there was another, there was another um, way of defining it, which is you learned about Nirvana too late. You know? <laughs> too late. Yeah. yeah, like as in you started listening after Kurt Cobain died. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Did Kurt Cobain tell you about Nirvana or did Courtney Love tell you about Nirvana? Ooh, that's, the real, that's, that's, yeah. that's how you know. That's, that's how you're that's on a, one side of the river or the that, other. I see that's that face, one, Joe. Actually. That mean, face mean, just means that Courtney told you about Nirvana. Pre-eulogy and post-eulogy, right? That, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking, what a mess that was. Speaking Ooh. of worker solidarity, what, what do you guys think about this whole KDE Plasma will now ask you on the desktop once a month for donations it'll just pop up that was once on the a desktop. year is it once a I year it, i thought it was, it once, was a once a month a year that's not enough that's not well, enough no i've already shown my cards I, you know what and I, how and i you feel can about are, this. and you can turn it off yes yeah. and i think I that's mean, the important part you can turn it off because when you look yeah. at microsoft they you can never switch any of their stuff off yeah, oh, okay you can well, turn that's... ads off you can just decide whether or not the ads are personalized yeah I'm, yeah so, right. so what would you say um, this, I think this is a real problem in some ways. So, I mean, I think that no one should expect that if you're doing something open source that you get any kind of reimbursement for it because you're effectively just putting it out there and the whole reason you're doing it should be to either learn or to scratch your own itch or to maybe, you know, bolster your resume or what, you know, there has to be a reason for you to do it and it can't be financial, right? Because the truth is, that a lot of people who are using free and open source software either can't afford or refuse, absolutely outright hostily refuse yeah. to pay for anything, right? There's a lot of yeah. in between in there, but well, there is, those, there is, those there are, are layers. The extremes. <laughs> there are layers, but there are yeah. definitely people who will look at something like this. Kate, I look at it, and, and I think Leo's saying this too. I look at something like KDE Plasma saying, hey, Think about all the work we're doing here and think about all the time it takes and the resources and the collaboration and all the things that go into it. You use this every day. Would it kill you to give us $20 a year? Um, and I think that's a very reasonable position to take because I'm in the camp of if something is worth it to you and has value in your life, then you should be able to return that value in some way. Right. And the open source mantra is always, well, be involved in some way. If you can contribute code, great. Contribute code. If you can, you know, do documentation, if you can, whatever it is that if you feel like you can contribute, that's the virtuous cycle, right? That you can kind of I, feed I, back I, I'm into that. Something that someone else designed, created a team, one person, a team, whatever, designed, created, and put out there. And I'm using it. Um, would I like to donate? Sure. But am I going to complain when a pop-up comes up? Absolutely not. If I have that much of a problem with it, my choices are go to another distro or learn to code well enough that I can make my own. So, listen, that, so, listen, so is this these... on KD Neon or is it on all KD distros? How is it going to work exactly? It's, it's going to be baked into Plasma itself. So that okay. means that if the distros package that up and turn that option off by default, that's you know their prerogative. But if you're getting plasma straight from the tap in whatever way you do, it's going to be on. I mean that's fair enough. I mean you, you know it's not like they're saying well if you don't contribute you can't use, is it? It's just you know would you Same like Microsoft? to Microsoft? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not like I've I've had a copy of Windows with the the message in the bottom right corner that says register for six years or anything like that. I mean, I, I've certainly never done that. I don't know anyone else who has honestly either. a watermark like that. I mean, if you made it super <laughs> subtle, 
I, I don't well, know that I'd be fully opposed to that. Th there's a little bit more than that because they don't allow you to customize at that point either. You can't change. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you're like, stuck with light yeah. mode, and you're like, oh, it's one a.m. Can you stop. really customize in Windows anyway, though? I mean, no, really, you like, turn on dark mode. You don't have to customize. But you can't it. You even change the wallpaper. Mode. Remember, you can't even yeah. change the yeah. wallpaper. It's win who cares? It's Windows. It's not like you're doing anything yeah. valuable on uh, it anyway. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't want to hit the, the all the, of the, the business work and and see it. No, yeah. I, yeah. I, I just, I think that for the, for that, let's say that there's a, a sliver of the population that is willing to give that just needs that little bit of a nudge. Right. And I always go back to this because I think it's a great example of how you can suggest and then actually see a, a return on it. So yeah. elementary, when they first started uh, publishing their distro, they just had the download link on the page and they just like every other distro, right? And then they thought, wait a minute, let's just put a little bit of friction there. They can still download it for free if they put zero in the box, but it makes them think about it for just a second, right? Mm. And if I remember correctly, Danny said like their their revenue or their intake of donations went up like tremendously, like not just yeah. a little mm -hmm. bit, like a couple people, like a lot of people looked at that box and they thought about the fact that like they're going to get this thing for nothing if they put a zero in and then maybe they thought well look all maybe right maybe i'll give a quid maybe i'll maybe give I'll two. exactly maybe i'll give 5 bucks because look a yeah. cup of coffee now costs like 7 if you go get a fancy cup from somewhere or something so i mean if i'm going to use this thing every day and it has value <laughs> it in my makes, life it makes you it just gives you that pause so that you think about it so if this little pop if up it once even a year 1% exactly of, of the people to donate that's still yeah. a lot of freaking money it is yeah, yeah. Or, well comparatively yeah. I, I, remember... I, I think that's an interesting point the idea that they the you know sometimes you need to give the choice to people because otherwise it just wouldn't occur to them to do so you have right. to give them right. it's like that's it's big. like how i mean this i know it's a slightly different thing but i mean it's the way that Netflix and Prime and all these things became so popular because, you know, back in the day, you had to download off this torrent site, that torrent site. It used to be a bit of a pain. But hey, if I just pay and I can stream, then I'll just pay and I can stream. No, no you know. I rode my bike to Blockbuster Video and physically rented my videos uphill mm -hmm. both ways, okay? Kids That's these right. days. They don't know what they've got, eh? That's right, man. But, no, yeah. but on the on the elementary thing, I remember that, that that created a whole lot of fervor against that box because of the way that they implemented it. And I, I agree with the way that they implemented it. Like, like, if you put zero in the box, the download button just lights up and you're good to go, right? But there was no indication that if you put zero in the box, that's how that would work. Um, yeah, there, that, were, there were a lot of people that were angry deceptive. about that. Uh, that was a little deceptive that you could yeah. put zero in. Well, box. like dark patterny style, right? Like, and we we yeah. rag on everybody else for doing that kind of thing. So uh, it's like another one of these things, isn't it? It's not the thing in itself, but the way that it's done, isn't it? Right, 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 and, right, right, right. And, and and it's a difficult balance, you know. How do you get something that is, you know, you know, at the end of the day, you want to raise some revenue. At the same time, you don't want to put people off from your. I don't want to say project. Sorry, product. I was going to say project. I think is a better word. Well, um, I feel like the people that are put off are typically running Arch and like pure Arch and pure Debian and BSD and stuff like that. Anyway, yeah. and, they were, and they were never going is, to is anyway. Is that even is that even really the demographic that they're targeting? Uh, you right. know, no, no, like no. But that. it is a higher right. proportion of people who are using open source than let's say someone who's using something else who are going to True. have kind of. Uh, you know, for the lack of a better term, fundamentalist beliefs when it comes to, you know, open source software. Yeah. You know, yeah. well, I um, mean, where where FOSS came from was, you know, had that fundamental belief. So it, it just tracks. It tracks. Yeah. So oh, I think it, guys... it is, I think it's a sensible, if it's done in a tasteful, inverted commas, and non-intrusive manner, I not the way that Microsoft or Apple or anybody else does it or Google. Um, hold on, hold on. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge you on that one, man. Google sucks, but Apple <laughs> they they don't check the box for you at all. You are meant to choose uh huh or uh uh. They don't highlight one. Like I, I mean, you, I mean that, that, that just shows my ignorance with Apple devices because I don't use exactly. Them. So stop but, bragging on them. Yeah, but but, but I'm hey, they, they, don't they, stop they, doing they, that. They, don't but 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 they're still big tech, so I have to have a go at them and just to annoy you yeah. as well. Fair. 
Yeah. Um, sorry, Joe, you were about to say something. Nothing of import. Have uh-huh. you guys seen the um, the most recent uh, Linux usage numbers? No. Yeah. Linux desktop usage numbers? No, was it like 3% or something? No, or it's 4% almost 5%. Last. It's almost wow. 5% now. It's like wow. some, it's either 4.6 or 4.9. I can't remember. But the amount of um, n- the number of people that are Linux gaming percentage wise has gone down. So one point nine two percent. So so it's not a Steam Deck thing. So it's not right. no longer a Steam Deck thing. Evidently, yeah. Steam yeah. opened the door, but the door is now open. So, well, I mean, I'd, I I mean, wouldn't be surprised if this is a lot to do with emerging markets, as it were. Because I mean, I know there's like there's a, there's been a couple of news articles about uh, Linux being used in Indian government schools, for example. Uh, when I was over there recently, yeah, I'm not going to say it was everywhere. It wasn't. But there was more, you know, Linux boxes and people using it than I see around the UK, for example. Um, and I, I'm sure I remember when the figures came out for when they hit 4% earlier in the year, you know, on the breakdown, they had like India at about 15%. Wow. Uh, yeah. Because um, the thing about India, as I mean, having just been there for the th- last three weeks. It's got um, a lot of people. Huge number of people. It's and yeah. it, it it is. I know it sounds trite, but really having that demographic dividend just skews everything. It makes life yeah. good as well. You know, you you never have to have a problem with deliveries because there's always about ten people waiting happily to be a delivery driver. It's never a problem getting a taxi because there's a thousand taxi drivers. Do you know what I mean? I mean, mm-hmm. they'll all they're, 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 they'll all try and skank you, but that's beside the point. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's the same reason why, for example, um, w- whenever I went to any of the kind of electronics shops there, there was such a massive variety of tech, phones, tablets, laptops, much more than the UK, because everybody's so price sensitive. There's literally everything at a 50 buck kind of increment because you know some people do make good money and some people are dirt poor you know and so um anyway i'm sure you know instead of just using cracked versions of windows which is apparently what some of my cousins used to do and they were used to some of them just decided well you know what let's use this free and open source thing instead we used to we still do but we used to too yeah yeah yeah, well, I think there was there, well, there was, and of course everyone knows that for a long time, running Linux was a genuine compromise. Like you had to know that if you were going to run Linux on the desktop, that you were making a conscious decision to not run a fairly large amount of software because this was pre Web 2.0, pre you know being able to do browser based things, and. You know, you had to sort of either have a dual boot or have a virtual machine or have two systems or or just say, I'm not going to use Linux because it doesn't support my needs or I'm not going to use Windows because I don't agree with it. And, you know, there was a lot more of a of a real give and take there than there is now. I mean, I just well, software as a service I, has been around for quite a while, but it has become more. It wasn't good enough, though. In, in That's the problem, years. Joe. Yeah, it, yeah. 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 It wasn't something that you could use on the daily you know in the same way and also the other thing i was just going to mention is that um obviously you know india is known as a hub of it and software engineering and so you Mm -hmm. you're going to have as a physical number of people right even if it's not the proportion just a physical number of people more people who will be interested in linux and open source and then when you then put that cohort of people into the worldwide numbers it's obviously going to bring things up you know, I thought for uh, a sec you said suffer engineering, and I was like, you know, that tracks too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that sounds like a good title for the podcast. I was just thinking to there myself. There it is. There it is. Yeah, it. Yeah. Say it, yeah. say it real fast. Suffer engineering. <laughs> <laughs> um, speaking of uh, newish type stuff, um, has anybody seen the the new Intel chips, the Luna Lake ones? Are um, these gonna rust on us on the inside out? Uh, I don't Thir- know. But... Thir- 13th and 14th gen, uh, the higher levels, uh, like X style ones, are oxidizing on the inside, which causes them to fail. 
Oh, okay. Um, oh, and this so is not. And they tried to fix this in firmware. They just. Basically, oh yes, they did. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah no, these yeah, are yeah. They're, they're, no. I all I know about these is that they're apparently uh, you, uh, as, as, as efficient. You don't. Yeah, you can't. You, you can't. don't. But yeah. but they were like, shh, baby bird, just apply the patch. Uh, well, 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 it's interesting, isn't it? That they they that well. There's two things to this. Number one, what? there's the actual technology, um, which looks very interesting. But I'll get to that in a second. The I think I ain't got a huge amount of evidence for this, but I think that that problem, the rusting problem, is why they've um, run through the generations. Um, and, you know, for example, in September, there's now going to be a XPS, Dell, new Dell XPS running the new Lunar Lake, which is what, 14th, 15th generation. When when in April, they'd released the last one. Are, are and they in planning July, on giving it released to everybody that bought the 13th and 14th? Exactly, yeah. Um, and in July, they'd um, uh, release the Snapdragon one. So you think to yourself, that's an incredible pace of development. There has to be a reason for that. Now, one of them is, I do think, because it's Panic. you know good good technology but also because they've got this technical debt problem of shit the ones we put before are causing problems let's just replace them with something new before too many people have them so it sucks if you were one of the oh people God. who got it's them still two generations of laptop buyers that are completely screwed over True. I'm, what 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 gets me is that people keep buying intel stuff and then it's just a just we're just waiting when and is, it just when keeps happening gonna... well, over and over and over. I mean, it's, it isn't like this is a, a one and done thing. Like, oh, oops, we made a, a mistake. Like Intel just keeps having either their construction sets are, you know, susceptible to, to issues. They're having issues with the physical processors themselves. The company itself is sort of in question right now in terms of like its future and what it's going to do. Like they, they don't, still don't okay. have an answer besides the efficiency cores to Ryzen. They still don't have an answer. Well, yeah. I would have a look well, at the the new Lunar Lake one. Well, I'm looking at it now, and it, it's. Yeah. I mean, if you believe their marketing, I mean, it looks like it's it, going it to be something. Great. Yeah. No. Yeah. Let so, me so, ask so, a Windows question. Um, has Windows done anything innovative lately? Ha have listen. they done anything other than add? Well, yeah. What's the you know, what's the re recall thing? Yeah, recall. That's the innovation, right? What oh my God! Everybody Hold on. Before doing? we get to recall, because that's going to eat up the rest of the show. Um, the one thing, and this is, I'm being cheeky. The one thing that they have innovated is that they finally accepted AMD as a first class citizen in Windows 11. So Intel, since Windows 10, well, both processors support this thing called extended page tables, which allows you to run a VM inside of a VM. Why would you do that? Some people are crazy, but it's a feature that these CPUs actually have right intel has has had that supported since windows 10 like the second major revision of windows 10 amd was thrown to the wayside and while the cpu supported it was not available until windows 11 you can tell i'm salty about it because i run amd stuff and it was there in the chip but it was not enabled in windows you could do it in linux you could even do it in proxmox but you could not do it in windows so for windows innovations they you know supported features that were built into the amd chip yay okay so, so salty about it. can i can no, i um, okay can i pay windows... devil's advocate here just devil's advocate for a second you're saying not about... on this one windows no, no, no. sucks <laughs> no win no windows does suck but what i'm saying is you're saying you know people keep buying intel stuff well what choice did people have till ryzen a couple of years ago amd well, so far that's not behind. a couple of years ago let me zoom out for you that was in like 2018 dude yeah. Six so years six has years. not corrected the market. I don't think the market works. We've known Intel sucks for six years, and they keep showing us that they suck for six years, and nothing has happened. Okay, I'm sorry. Ryzen's like, uh, market share has increased about the same as Linux's. But why hasn't the market corrected itself? Because manufacturers, manufacturers aren't using AMD. There's no what it every is. single manufacturer has an AMD laptop option right now. Why has it corrected itself? Co compared to the number of Intel machines, compare that to anything. So you look at Lenovo. I've got a Lenovo AMD machine. Um, I I, I love it. But um, you know, it was it wasn't exactly very easy. Not once so easy. There weren't loads of different SKUs of it, but there were is fifteen million models mm. with I you know Intel. Right, but but sure, that's that's 
but that's still part of the market. These these hardware partners are still part of the market. Why did they not shift to AMD when they knew their customers were getting fleeced by this, by by these kinds of things, not getting the uh, the types of performance increases year over year that that they should have been getting, that the market has provided for years and years and years, up until AMD decided to pump the brakes, or I'm sorry, Intel decided to pump the brakes on innovation because AMD started to suck back in like 2015 with Bulldozer. That was trash. I, I yeah, but AMD just stagnated, and yep. everybody business. was Big just tech. fine with it. It's Big tech. Right. And pre pre rising. Exactly. Remember pre Ryzen? I mean, they were pathetic. Like nobody yeah, bought were. AMD. Why the hell would yeah. you? It was ridiculous. But, but but prior to that, they were stomping all over Intel, right? Like it's been this give and take. Yes, back back. And then. every yes. every time AMD has stepped up to the plate and stomped Intel out, Intel has innovated. But now, AMD stepped up to the plate, stomped on Intel, and Intel was like, "Have some efficiency cores." That was the only answer. And they weren't even supported for like two years on any operating system. Just now, over the past couple of years, have these efficiency cores actually been fully supported in even Windows. And yet, yeah. still, they're top of the heap. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. So why, why do There's you definitely. That? There's got to be a political well, aspect to this. I mean, there just has to I be. I right? think, no, I think there's a deal aspect to this. I think, mm. I, I mean, I think there's maybe a little bit of a grease into the wheels going on in the back end and someone, <laughs> someone larger made up of a group of people, I don't know, you know, should take some kind of collective well, action against mm. that. See, I'm being very vague. <laughs> well, well, wasn't there a whole thing where for the longest time Microsoft wouldn't, allow any vendor to release a laptop with a different operating system on it if they wanted to uh maintain any kind of deal with them yeah yeah there's all sorts of loud? stuff all sorts of stuff like that has occurred isn't it? i mean people used to talk about the wintel monopoly didn't they you know yeah, there was I'm, so you said it not me well, no, I mean, they were so they were so tightly bound together, Microsoft and Intel. It was, I mean, it was a it was a business decision, and it made it even easier to have that business decision when AMD weren't that good. Um, and now that you AMD are better, um, they've had to do something. But to be honest, I reckon the real reason why, if there is any innovation or anything that's being done by Intel, is because of the M series chips on Apple. Um, yeah. It's made my. Actually, it's made my. That's probably true. Yeah, it's made Microsoft change tack. I mean, you know, the idea a couple of years ago that Microsoft would re release a Surface without an Intel chip, you know, using Qualcomm Snapdragon, you know, just wouldn't have wouldn't have happened. You know, there wasn't even an AMD version of the Surface until about two years ago, or something like that. Um, but that's it, right there. You you you've pointed at it. Intel hasn't innovated because they didn't have to their yeah. market dominance whether that including greasing of the wheels or not they were confident that they would not lose a substantial amount of market share if they did literally nothing mm. and until apple came With out and scandal said, hey, after scandal it, yeah it, it, apple came out and said hey y'all there's a different way and then Intel got wind that Snapdragon was going to try this different way. And they were like, oh, God, put some fish, do something. Ah. But marketing people have meandered their way up to the top of Intel. And are, I mean, say what you want about Steve Jobs. But my man had it right when it came to engineers should be at the top of the heap when it comes to decision making like this. Because when you get marketing people, you lose the innovation part. And all you're trying to do is pretty up with words and try to hawk whatever you had three years ago. That's what happens every single time. But again, Intel's so far up the top of the heap that they're not going to lose. Yeah, it I, to I was AMD. looking at their market share, and it, the gap is narrowed, but it hasn't really right. closed. And you if you to. think think back like 20 years ago, I remember switching back and forth between Intel and, and AMD processors. Mm -hmm. Because the the price to performance ratio kept kind of switching back back and forth, but yeah, that's been a while. Yeah, I mean efficiency cores are nice. I mean, 
I can't say that it's not a good idea. I kind of want AMD processors to implement I mean, two or four of these in every one of their chips, you know, just, just yeah. to do little tasks and keep my wattage usage low. I mean, it, but, have, haven't they got that in the, the new Ryzen AI? Uh, those are, those are MPUs. That's a different thing. Oh, yeah, fair point. Yeah, fair point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's still but, taking I mean, load off your main cores, though, isn't it? Depending on what you're doing, yes, it is. Um, but yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I'm all for an NPU as well because I want local, uh, artificial. I don't want to call it intelligence. Um, Large language on, models on board. Really. Yeah, well, because I want the image generation too, right? Like, I, I don't, I don't want to like slap this on a podcast as the as the you know featured picture of the podcast or anything. But I do want it to give me ideas, right? Mm -hmm. Like, instead of me googling this thing, it gives me just a weird amalgamation of all the junk out there. And then it gives me an idea of where I want to go with what I'm going to create, right? So yeah, yeah, I'm not trying to, <laughs> I'm not trying to put out vaguely uncopyrighted stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, Eric, if I remember correctly, you've used quite a few of these large language models. I mean, I'm sure I've heard you talk about perplexity and anthropic and stuff in the past. Yeah. Um, yeah. How useful have you found them? You really have to contain your sort of expectations and also like what you're trying to do so if you're using it for what it's i mean so basically it's it's a <clears throat> it's like the magic eight ball just much bigger you you mm -hmm. take all this information that they've taken and shoved into these models and then you coax it and you prompt it in a certain way and then you will get back and that's what i've really come to to, to learn and realize about these is whether it's a generating an image or text or anything is none of it is new there's nothing innovative right. there's nothing that is mm. a, a, a surprise unless you're, it's just something you're not familiar with if it's a certain half type of, of it's literature, stolen um, more than half i mean i i, I, yeah. I at this point <laughs> you know and I was so being generous. really yeah so i mean that's really what it comes down to is like you know i use it very specifically for generating little blurbs of content uh I, it's really good if you give it a constrained set of data to do mm -hmm. something like look at a, a privacy policy or a, a, a you know a terms of use terms of service kind of thing and you literally attach the document and you just say focus on this one specific thing because it's very good at understanding knowledge and understanding how knowledge fits together or, or words and you know the language words, not, how words yeah, language yeah, so not knowledge yeah i'm sorry one of the language one of the cool things that i saw uh well cool for humans uh, that I saw was that um, AI, LLMs, whatever, um, are still worse at summarizing uh, an article than than humans. I think we all knew this, but oh, yeah. it was nice. I, it was nice to see an actual study being done on this. And one study of you know we need twenty of them saying the same thing. But you know after those other nineteen studies come out or whatever, we'll realize that AI was trash from the beginning. But I mean, um, but it does have its uses, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're an Apple guy. Have you used any of the Apple intelligence stuff? Uh, I'm not on the beta, so no. But my phone is one of the ones that will support it, so I'll report back, man. All I, dude, you know what's funny about that is that Siri's not as bad as everybody says it is. I mean, Siri and Google, whatever, and all those other ones, man. Like, I'll say things that I don't, I do not expect her to be able to do at all and like it'll it'll just work like can you uh add this track to the to the next playlist or whatever and then skip a track back like it, it, it'll do these like weird combo things and so uh, i don't know so if ai the apple intelligence is any better to than this then i think man uh i think it's gonna be pretty good man i think yeah. i want her You've seen that movie, Ryan's Girl with your hands? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, mm -hmm. I really do want that. I don't think I'll fall in love with my phone, but no. I do want that kind of ability to be even wilder with it's my a, requests. It, 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 it's just you, you know, uh, admitting live on air that you fancy Scarlett Johansson. I mean, <laughs> and you want her in your ear all the time. There, Why there are worse not? things to, to, to admit to, I would think. <laughs> right, exactly. Right. Okay. 
Um, no, I, I, I have wanted that for a long time as well. And, and honestly, if you have a well, pixel Scarlett device, Johansson? yeah, hundred percent same here as well. well yeah. <laughs> if you have a pixel device, Gemini is really getting, and not like in a slow pace, like they are fast, like pushing yeah. very, very fast. Yeah. I've, um, I've, I've and, seen a lot of the, um, coverage about the, uh, the new pixel nines and a lot of the coverage is about the AI stuff yeah. rather the, than the thing stuff. that i heard about the gemini stuff is that you have to go all in right like you can't use the old google assistant you have to use the Go- gemini and stuff that the assistant could do that gemini can't do you just have to suck it up well and that's what's changing so i agree with that Good. that was okay, two, cool. that was that was two months ago so i i sw- tried to use gemini and one of the things that i love in the assistant is the ab- ability for it to read a web page so basically I treat a web page almost like a yeah. podcast or a podcast in a way where I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to sit here and read, you know, a, a 15 minute read on my phone when I can listen to it and be doing something else. So I will Dude. say, you know, read this. Now, the Gemini did not have that. And I, when I tried to switch over, I was like, well, then I can't because I need that. And so, mm-hmm. but they've added it and it's in there. And so they're ah. doing that. They're bringing all those things out of Assistant. But it is a, right now, it's a bit of a Frankenstein, you know, just sort of. Am- yeah. amalgam of, of the things together but they are in, an, in a particularly un-google way they are actually bringing features from the old to the new because their their usual pattern is something like think of google music or hangouts or something like that that were a robust mature product they replaced it with something that had many fewer features and did not bring over those mm-hmm. old features that everybody liked. Whereas in this case, they actually are because they're bringing. God, I didn't remember those. I had that trauma. Like I, I immediately thought of inbox. <laughs> inbox was yes. amazing, yep. and then I they were just like three, three years. Yep. Yep. And then they were just like, yeah, nah, we're good. Yep. But, back but they Gmail. did, they did bring some of the like snooze and some of the other pieces back into yep. Gmail, right? Um, which makes it so that I honestly have a hard time using other email clients because I'm so. I'll, although. Um, Proton's email client, they're doing a pretty good job of bringing in features like that. So I don't dislike it yeah. as much as I dislike like my live account or something. But mm-hmm. um, but yeah, they they famously have done that where they just don't care about bringing those old features that everybody loved into the new. But in this case, they really are bringing those assistant features and not only bringing them over, but enhancing them because instead of getting that and this was my experience with siri but it's also been a long time but if you ask it something that is even remotely challenging to it it just wants to spit a, a web result at you which isn't mm, helpful. Yeah, that yeah, still that, happens yeah that still happens so now you're getting a lot less of that now it's it actually will if if it is going to prompt you it's not going to just be a dumb link to something it's actually going to either ask you a follow-up or give you a set of options that are re- related to what you're trying to do and it's not perfect yeah. But they've made so much progress in such a short amount of time that it's pretty incredible to see a company like Google, especially, who has the ability to innovate and has the ability to polish a product, but they just usually choose not to. In this case, they're actually putting effort behind it. Now, where they're going to end up, is it going to be like her? Who knows? But, you know, I would like to at least have something that is a competent assistant that can, and, and you know, and of course, privacy, are you going to allow it to see your email? Are you going to allow it to see your calendar? Are you going to allow it to see your contacts? I mean, that's going to be up to an, you individually, but to have it running locally on my device to sort of encapsulate all of this. And, and like, I've been listening to a lot of uh, security podcasts about location data and how sending things out and like just having apps on your phone and and the fact that, you know, your car app and like all these other apps are capturing this data and then they're selling it to LexisNexis, who's then selling it to your insurance provider and you know, on and on and on. It just makes your head spin. Having that stuff locally on your device, which is what Pixel's doing, uh, means that, and Google is staunchly against that. They've come out and said, we're not going to share location data or this telemet. Tele- okay, tele- tele- but you, really, do you trust them? Right? No, no, because they're going to monetize it and that's okay because honestly... Even through all these years that I've I've been a Google customer for 25 years now, um, I still think that they value their Masochist, customer enough. Man. No, no, no. They they value their customer enough. <laughs> and just like Apple, you have to trust right. if you're in the Apple I agree. ecosystem. I agree. You have to trust that they, yes, they're going to abuse you. Yes, they're going to want to monetize you in every possible way they can. It's a, it's a 
you know, it's it's a consumer driven uh, capitalists business. I mean, they're going to squeeze every cent they can. But the thing I like about Google and the thing I like about Apple, Apple probably more so, is they try to contain it themselves. Yeah. So if you only have one head to chop off, that's a hell of a lot easier than the Hydra that we deal with usually, where you know these data brokers are are just sucking up. Look at that. No, leak. it's well, like that... it's just a it's just a Hydra head pinata, man. You chop. Oh, you see the one head, and then you kill the one head, and you're like, ha ha! And then okay. the Hydra pops out. You're like, oh, there was a second boss the whole time. Yeah. yeah okay. So so yeah. you you make an interesting point about you know data mining and and, and all this kind of stuff. And obviously, you know, it's something that you know we are all concerned about and tracking and all this kind of stuff. I do sometimes wonder though, whether we're all kind of a bit pissing in the wind really. Um, no. beca because, because, and this is why when I was in India, the amount of data mining that I saw, you know, people were just giving s truckloads of data to their uh, whatever services that they were using. Everybody was getting this advert and that advert and this and that and the other. And they were happy with it because it was working for whatever they were doing. And I and thought to free. myself, yeah, yeah. And I thought to myself, Google are making so much from this, so mm. much from this that is, you know, I, are our, are our attempts of kind of pushing back just completely worthless because they're getting it from somewhere else anyway. Mm. You know, oh, that's, what's kind of the, the point? The, the whole entire point of smart things was this, man. Like, there was going to be walled off gardens. I think a lot of these companies saw it coming and were like, but if we start tracking them through their toaster, then we'll be good to go, man. Who knew there was a microphone in your toaster the whole time? And it wasn't to spy on you, so but it was to advertise to you. So, yeah. and that's I mean, that's one of the things I go back to with Google all the time, and and I say this to my wife too. It's like they are so they're such simple creatures. Like they just want to sell you stuff, you know. Right, but I'm not worried about Google like using that information nefariously right. Neither am I. it's it, it's it's that they will store that information and a subpoena would require them to release that information right yeah. i'm not worried about first party in this case i'm not worried about apple in this case right. what i'm what i'm i'm happy well, that apple will um encrypt without keys you can actually ask apple tell it don't do the icloud sharing key thing and then stuff is truly encrypted at rest mm -hmm. in all places, right? Yeah. You can do that. Can you do that with Google, though? I'm not sure. Honestly, it's a mm -hmm. good question. And it depends on the service. So, I mean, the, the thing with Apple is obviously that their services are so tightly packed and, and, and integrated. Right. Yeah. Google doesn't. I mean, yes, they sort of have ecosystems. And yes, I mean, they've got Gmail and Drive and that kind of stuff. But it's not like... I don't ever feel like it's as as straightforward as like Apple's suite of products that yeah. the way they yeah. do it. So, no, I, to me, it's not even so much the major players. Like, you know, I agree with you. The first parties don't scare me. It's the it's these data breaches from these like pissant companies that you've never even heard of that have like everybody's social security number and then they just oh yeah that happened last right. month quite literally yeah. happened last exactly month, so. i mean i got that i got the have i been pwned email about that where it's like shows me all of my previous addresses my social security number my phone number my email address like everything that that anyone would ever need about me to create you know some sort of identity hey, theft situation everybody Everybody needs to go freeze their credit, like right oh, now. Oh, well, mine's been frozen for years. So I mean, I'm not worried Do about new credit. Yeah, if, if it's you're free. in the U.S. or around physically the U.S., freeze your credit. Yep, you have no reason not to do it. I mean, yes, it can be annoying if you need to open it back up, but it's not even that hard. You just go do it, and you know. But if you leave it open, log on to the website. For... Look, links. If you get yeah. to the one where they they say that you have to pay them to freeze it. You wrong one. Wrong stuff. Yeah. Yep. It is yeah. it is free to do this and it's free to undo it. Yep. And it doesn't take that long. Just yep. do it. It you'll save so many headaches down the road yep. when someone inevitably, inevitably uses your information to try and open up some trash Walmart card. Yep. And to to you know, Majid's point, like, do we 
I mean, is it fighting a losing battle? Well, I think if you're trying to look at it from a privacy standpoint, I think, you know, I think 10 years ago, there were Luddites that were like, well, as long as I'm not on social media, as long as I'm not, you know, and, and they were sort of listing off these ways that they felt their privacy was being compromised. The truth is with data, data mining, data brokers, the way that the lax privacy laws are in the United States in particular, you know, none of that matters anymore. I, I, I could have never be online ever in my entire life. And my data is still going to be out there because I have yeah. a bank, because I have, you know, a credit card, because I have services that I, you know, utilities, I have a house. Like, you can't not live in society and have your data be available through these yeah. services. And what I no, hope is, go ahead. Uh, did, I mean, no one expected public records to be abused like this. I, no. I mean, I think I think you see it now. Like you look you look around, and I think we could make some really good educated guesses. And then no we one would all have been it. right. No, no. There are plenty of people that were considered paranoid that completely <laughs> expected it. Well, yeah. sure, but I mean, I, I, I guess when I say no one, I mean the uh, the the royal we, right? <laughs> the the fact that you know the state is being used by companies to price their products differently where you are located currently like stuff mm -hmm. like that or your 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 background or your your earn you know your income your insurance company your car insurance is going to charge you differently based on how you drive how if you brake hard or something like that yeah uh, yeah so my so my son has know, that in his car it's got one of these black boxes to which oh, hey, will, will, which will tell them no that was the only way we could get him any insurance to be honest he was too young to yeah, get any insurance I and, and you know i i have to spend another thousand pound which i didn't have so eric that, your 1987 buick isn't gonna last forever oh, I know. <laughs> um I just wanna... yeah. so so here's a question then if you i mean you you, you brought that site forward what's it um how i've been pwned right if you think you have been you know, your email address and therefore God knows what else has been exposed. What do you do? Freeze so there credit. are, you How can't, you, freeze your credit. You, yeah, you freeze your credit, but then you can also go and request that your data be taken off of these, um, these sites. And, and you actually can, there's a, there's a site called Intel techniques.com and they do open source like OPSEC site or OSINT. O S I N T mm -hmm. like open source in intelligence. And they, they gave you and I'll, I'll make sure it's in the show notes, but or if we, do we have show notes for this? No, we don't have show notes no. for this, but yeah. Okay. Never go look it up yourself. It's called Intel techniques.com, but they have a, a whole list of ways for you to go out. I mean, you can get a service, right? You can get delete me. You can get, there's like a, a handful yeah. of these services. that will Yeah. Do that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've, I've heard of delete me actually. Yeah. We're, think we're about doers. This. Think about this. If you use a service like that, how do they find your data? Because you give them all of your data. You have to give it's them all of It's all public anyway. Stuff. It's fine. Well, but okay. If you want to pay $200 a year or whatever, Consumer Reports just did a, a, a study on these services. And, and some of them actually do work, but they are expensive. And you do have to give them all of your data. But you can do it yourself. And this IntelTechniques.com website... I have no affiliation. It's just a, it's the, the person who puts it together does open source. He's getting source kickbacks, help. guys. Don't buy it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, um, but he they give you details on how to go and actually request that you get your this stuff taken off of the services. And actually, what they found, interestingly enough, in this latest breach that we've been referring to, yeah, here is it if comes. you if you had gone through the process of getting your data removed from those sites from from the the site that leaked this data. None of those, none of that information is contained in that breach. That's Anyone how you know. Went, this is how yeah. you know that the company that was actually doing, uh, doing the leaking on accident, right? They were actually a legitimate public information gatherer, right? Because that mm -hmm. means that they were honoring the delete me requests. They were mm -hmm. actually deleting people off of mm -hmm. the list. The downside, though, is of, of this, if you're doing it yourself or you're paying some other company to do it, the reason that you keep paying the companies to do it or the reason that you're going to have to go and do it over and over again is because the public records are still out there and the, right. you, your information will eventually make it back to these lists. And so you have to do it over yep. and over and over and over and over. And I know, but over again, it's insane. It's insanity. Yeah. Well, hopefully this changes because I think enough people are starting to recognize things like I think you it's overestimate illegal. us. 
<laughs> well, I think it's illegal, but you start to see things like police departments. They don't need a warrant to go to a third party data broker to find information about you. Correct. And that's something that they can do. Uh, oh, they've they been doing that. Go... This is what I was saying about Google. I'm not worried about Google. Right. I'm worried about right. somebody subpoenaing no, Google. But that's a subpoena. In the case of a data broker, they don't even need a subpoena. All they need to do is pay the ten dollars or whatever it costs for a record uh, search. Yeah, yeah, any true. citizen, and then they have the all the information. dollars and do it. The so FBI has no been doing that a lot. Is required. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the so FBI anyway, has been like, doing this for a long time. So hopefully there are some changes in the laws themselves, and they, we can actually get a little bit better with that. I agree. Is it likely? I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen after this year's election or whatever. But listen, you know, the EU is our only hope. So, um, yeah. Majid, I don't know what y'all are doing, but you know, well, knock on the hey, EU. Have you not heard of Brexit? We're not in the EU. Unfortunately, I, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying. I'm saying. You know, uh, when you fit it into the rest of your begging to the EU, make sure you're like, hey, could we <laughs> also borrow some of those privacy laws too? Yeah. I mean, GDPR. And then hopefully, thankfully, we we were on the tail end when GDPR. Um, was passed, and so we were still part of the EU, right. and, that, and that has been an amazing, you know, that's made a big difference. But also, now I have to click on a cookie banner for every single website I go to. No, thank you. I mean, I appreciate it. it there was some good, but one of the things about those cookie Didn't banners there used is that to be, um, a tool that you could add. Yeah, that there's extensions that will do that for you, but it yeah, but it has extension. to be updated all the time. And that guy's not getting paid. And how did we open up this show? Pay your people. Yeah. He's not getting paid. Has anybody yes. used any of these things like delete me or this. anything? Yes. You have? Worth okay. it? I, I have it I have it free through a service that I that I have. Like I I don't pay for it, but I get it as an ex auxiliary service uh with something. And yep, it works. Cool. Mm -hmm. Have you I noticed mean, have... any difference since then? Uh I still get spam calls, but I mean I think that's just because you can robocall everybody in the phone book, you know? Yeah, you're not going to get away. I don't know about you guys, but lately, like certain hours of the day, you know, some some days I'll go most of the day with no calls. And then for like an hour to a two hour time period, I will just get spammed yeah. with Medicaid calls, Medicare calls. Yeah. Are you selling your house calls? Everything. And it's just a big flood of them all at once, one right after the other. So I signed up for... I went through a phase where if I'd get calls, I'd, I'd pick up and I'd like go, Majid's Kebab House, can I take your order, please? <laughs> Majid's Kebab House, can I take your order, please? And then the people, well, because on the other side of the phone goes, I think I've got the wrong number. <laughs> what, what's funny to me is that all the, all the like actual people that are calling me are calling for the wrong guy. But I've had my phone number for well over a decade. So someone must have transposed some numbers somewhere on some paperwork and then given them my number. That's the kind of call that I get and it's, now, I hate it so much. I have noticed oh. that a lot of the automated systems, if you don't say anything after picking up the phone, because they're, they're, they're listening to see if someone's actually there. If you don't say anything after picking up the phone, then after 10 seconds, it'll just drop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's usually what happens. So, so I, I've used the, the call assist, you know, like pixels have got call assist. Uh, where they'll answer the phone for you. So yeah. galaxies have that as well. And I've started using that. And yeah, they'll just drop, you know, after. A yeah, they'll, they'll do that. It's fine. So it is one thing, the one, one of the few things, but one of the very strong reasons why I can see myself continuing to use Pixel devices mm -hmm. because the, the on-device phone um, screening is so good. I mean, I don't deal with any of that nonsense. If it's a number, first of all, it screens everything itself, almost everything without me even intervening. Like it just does it in the background. I never even hear it ring. It doesn't, the, I don't get the text notification. I don't hear get the phone notification. If something gets through, because I did turn it down a little bit because it was screening out first time callers. Like it's pretty granular. And I had it set to where even first time callers were getting screened and like, they would be from like a medical office or something. And so I turn that back. But if I get one of those that I, that is either from a different area code or for somewhere else in the country, I just click screen call and leave it alone. And if it's yeah. someone that's actually needs to talk to me, like they can, I can see them saying it on the screen and then pick it up. But 99 times out of a hundred, it's just junk, you know? Yeah. And, and that's what, what it's gotten to is that the phone system is basically useless because unless it's a number that's in your system and someone you already know 
then why you know why would you ever answer it? Because you know it's so. Let me, be let me let me let me tie this back to hunting. yeah. Let me tie this back to the the opening statement of Majid. You're a zillennial. Okay. Do you remember back in the day? And this is so we can close the show, right? Do you remember back in the day when the phone rang and you picked it up instead of just staring at your screen? Yes. Look. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you see the phone ring and you see who it's from and you're like, oh, I'm not talking to him today. I'm going right, to make right, this right. gesture right here and you guys yes. should know what I'm talking yep, about. Yep, yes. Yeah. Who, who yes. are you calling? Yeah. Well, you know, those yeah, people for those look, for those just listening, because we don't have video. I don't think I don't think we're going to have video on this. No, episode, but for those listening, that was the rotary dial movement that oh, Joe God, was I, doing. Yeah. <laughs> I remember yeah. those phones, man. Those friends yeah, yeah. that had a lot of nines and zeros in their numbers, you were always like, oh, oh my God. And yeah. you had to wait. Yeah. Uh, and then start yeah. again. And then start again. Have you yeah. ever seen how those systems worked? Look it no. up sometime on YouTube. It's pretty fascinating okay. the way the switch gear worked in the in the, in, in right. the, telcos. In the non-existent yeah. show notes, we'll have a link to a video with that. <laughs> how about how about payphone? Oh, I remember payphones. Oh, yeah. yeah, I remember yeah. payphones. I mean, I mean, how, how else were you Calling supposed to, cards. Uh, uh, you know, yeah. ring dodgy people at dodgy yeah. times? Well, how are, how yeah. else were you supposed to drop a dime on someone, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Calling yeah, cards. Calling I, remember, I, I, I remember calling cards because it used to be bloody expensive to ring abroad. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was my only way that I could ring my fiance when she's yeah. well, my See. wife. Now, when she was my fiance back in India, I spent, I think thousand bucks a year <laughs> on calling cards to speak to her at a time I, and we're talking about the year 2002 at a time where my student loan was only three and a half grand no <laughs> i did i, I did the good old I did days something similar at first and then dial pad the applicate the online application dial pad became a thing and it allowed me to make calls from korea to the U.S. because you could call anywhere into the U.S. for free, uh -huh. even if you were overseas. So I would go to the dial pad website and I would call my then fiance and call my dad and my mom and all that jazz. And all well, I had to amazing. do was go to a, a, an Internet cafe. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that That's was the cool. thing, isn't it? Because if I wanted to get onto the Internet, that meant me having to walk into university and then use the computer uh, rooms that we had there. And which actually Look, I was in, had I was in Korea. I was in yeah. Korea. They had Internet everywhere yeah. in, in, in like 99, <laughs> yeah. 2000. Yeah. yeah, well, good. Not the internet. UK didn't. <laughs> yeah. The UK didn't. Yeah. But okay. Well, I think uh, you know, on that spectacular bombshell, I think we should end the the show. Um, as usual, it's been great talking to you all. It's been great uh, hearing that Eric's doing well. Um, there will be an episode probably in two weeks' time. Who knows what we'll be talking about? Who knows who will be on there? But I'm sure it will be fun. And so, until then, I'm still Majid. Oh, oh yeah. Good. It's your turn, Joe. You got. I just go. started being Joe. Oh, you're just yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'm will always be Leo. Hey, it's episode 35. I looked at X. Yay. Yay. Oh, yeah. And let us know. <laughs> Contact us to show and all that sort of stuff as well. Linux, linuxotc.org. Find us on Mastodon. Blah, yes, blah, blah. It's in the non existent show. I should show see two thirds yeah. of you here in a couple of minutes.